The reason we are here today is to talk about the Klipsch Forte 3. Hello everyone, this is Brian. Welcome, thanks for stopping by. If you've been here before, welcome back. I know it's been a long time. I've uh, made a few changes here to hopefully have a better workflow and be able to pump out content on a more regular basis. So hopefully you'll be seeing more of these videos as we move forward. Obviously the name has changed. I've changed it from AV Home to Hi-Fi Home Theater. Uh, it's going to be a lot of two channel and also surround sound home theater and kind of integrating the two, how you can integrate the two together better. Uh, so that's just, you know, that's just what I'm interested in. I kind of, um, I, I enjoy both sides of the aisle, two channel and home theater scene. So that's the kind of content I'm gonna be making. To give you a little bit of backstory as far as myself and Klipsch Heritage speakers, I had a pair of La Scala's uh, some years ago, probably I would say geez, maybe 10 years ago that I bought off of Craigslist. Got a great deal on them. Um, I think they were my first Klipsch speakers actually. So I knew I had heard how good the Heritage line was and I got a good deal on La Scala's. So yeah, I uh, jumped in my pickup truck that I had at the time and drove out there. The guy helped me load them in the back of my truck, brought them home sent them down in my living room, not a very big living room, maybe 12 foot by 18 feet. And my TV was on the long wall. So I was probably 12 feet from uh, the wall where I had the La Scala's on. So these things look like just, they look like big honking washing machines on either side of my television. And I turned them on and just the thing that I remember is just the clarity and the dynamics. It was just so eye opening to me. I mean, I, I won't forget that. They didn't have a ton of bass, but what they had was very clean. So, because it was an entirely horn-loaded speaker. But yeah, I really enjoyed those La Scala speakers. Yeah, I ended up selling those speakers because that's when I really started to get into DIY uh, and, and kit, speaker kits. So, this would actually be my second pair of Heritage Klipsch speakers. Um, I did buy these myself. These are not sent to me for review or anything. I didn't get any kind of, uh, review or discount or anything like that. So I paid for these with my own money and I pretty much pay for everything I review with my own money. Um, if that's not the case, I will of course let you know in the video and we're just going to get right into it. As far as the looks of this speaker, I mean, they're a very classic look. They have a very retro look to them with the black grills, but if you swap out the lamb's wool grills or you order the distressed oak color, they take on more of a mid-century modern look, and I think they look really nice. I'm more of a fan of the lamb's wool grill, but I also like the black grill with the black oak uh, veneer color. So they're uh, definitely a different look, but they have that old school heritage clips look to them. So what do these things sound like? Um, they have a big sound to them. They create a very large scaled sound stage, very clean. The mid range detail and separation is just really on another level. Once you listen to these and then you listen to say a two way bookshelf, you're, you're really going to notice the lack of mid-range detail is missing. The highs are detailed, not harsh. The bass doesn't go super deep. Uh, doesn't have a ton of low end output, but what's there is very clean and tight. Klipsch efficiency ratings, you can generally subtract four to five dB for those. So in reality, this speaker is probably about a 95, 96 dB efficient speaker, which is still fairly high. As I ventured into DIY speakers, they were generally uh, the horn type speakers. Most, uh, pretty much all of them use compression drivers, waveguides, pro woofers. So I was, I'd grown accustomed to that high efficiency dynamic sound. Being involved 
with building DIY theater speakers for many years, um, pretty much all of them using waveguys, compression drivers, and pro level uh, paper cone woofers. I was already accustomed to horn loaded speakers and I uh, had an uh, expectation of dynamics and low distortion. So coming in to my experience with the Forte 3, and that's what I got. I mean, it delivers. Mid-range is the standout here. In fact, I would probably say the sound is a little mid-range forward. And not only that, the mid-range has realistic bite to it. Uh, the mid-range along with uh, the treble and the bass really rounds out the sound. This speaker makes pretty much everything you put through it sound like a live event. Even studio recordings sound like a live event through the speaker. And I actually think that mid-range bite helps a little bit. Definitely the dynamics, uh, definitely the low distortion. Imaging on this speaker was very solid. I usually use these facing straight out. I didn't really tow them in at all. Um, probably a good eight inches from the back wall seemed to give me the sound that I like the best. One thing about positioning the Forte 3 though that you have to keep in mind, and you probably want to think about this before you purchase the speaker, is it's very short, so it's not very tall. The tweeter is already probably below ear level. On top of that, it uses a horn with a design that restricts the vertical dispersion. Okay, so you take those two things, the combination of a low height and a horn restricting the vertical dispersion, and if you are too close to the speaker, it is going to sound like the sound stage is low. So you really need a good 12 to 14 feet of distance between you and the Forte 3 in order to give that those highs a chance to disperse up to your ear level so that you don't have this restrained low sound stage. I've seen people put these on stands. I've uh, noticed people maybe tilt them back a little bit. I know it's designed that way, but it's not my favorite part of the speaker. But like I said, if you're 12, 14 feet away, you should be fine. I guess you could put it up on stands, you could tilt it back. Me personally, I'm not really crazy about using a speaker uh, in a way that it wasn't designed for or modifying a speaker to make it work for my situation. So if you don't have 12 to 14 feet to work with and you're not crazy about putting these up on stands or tilting them back at all, that may be something to keep in mind when you're shopping around for these. Another thing I like about the Forte 3 is that this speaker will show you the differences in your upstream signal chain. If you use different amplifiers, you're going to hear it. If you change out DACs, you're going to hear a difference. You change out cartridges on your turntable, you're going to hear the difference. And a lot of speakers, you may be able to hear that difference, but the thing is with the Forte 3, is it's probably still going to sound good. Whenever you change the amplifiers or cartridges, it's not just going to sound different, but it, or it's not going to sound bad. Whereas some speakers, if you put a tube amp on them, you may not like the sound coming out of them. With the Forte 3, it's not going to sound bad. It's just going to sound different. I think that goes for a lot of high sensitivity speakers. You could use a lower power tube amp and you're not going to get a bad sound out of it. You're just going to get a different sound out of it. Now, you may like that sound. You may not. I did try the Forte 3 with this shit Agir. That's a low-powered Class A-ish amp with, with about 20 watts per channel. Uh, it sounded really good. The mid-range and the highs were very it, warm sounding. But it did lose some of that low-end grunt in the bass. Switching over to the shit Vidar took some of the sweetness away from the mids and the highs, but it still sounded very rich, but it also added that mid-range 
punch and control, or not the mid-range punch, that base and low base control punch back into the Forte 3. Um, I generally liked the Forte 3 with the Class AB Vidar better. I also, I did try it with the Crown XLS 1002. Uh, it was okay. It st still had the punch, but lacked the warmth in the mid-range that the Vidar gave it. For most speakers, you set them up there and they're producing the sound, right? They're working hard. They're producing the sound. With the Forte 3, these things don't produce sound. Sound emanates from them. Sound flows out of them like through a window. Cons for the Forte 3, there's not many. Uh, and I, I don't really want to say that the height of the speaker is a con because it's not necessarily. But I am going to kind of say that maybe the horn that's being used isn't the best choice of horn for its height. And it's because, like I said earlier, the horn is designed to restrict the vertical dispersion, which is normally a good thing because it stops high frequencies from bouncing off your ceiling and your floor. But in this case, if you're not far enough, if you're not far enough away from the speaker, that vertical restriction is not going to reach your ear at the right height, and therefore it's going to make it seem like the sound stage is too low. It's going to make it feel compressed. Uh, so that's just one thing to really keep in mind if you're shopping for this speaker is you really need enough room between you and the speaker to give those highs uh, enough distance to reach your ear at the proper level. Especially if you're not going to be willing to put these up on stands or tilt them back at all, which I'm personally not willing to do that. If I buy a product, I really want to use it the way it was designed. Con number two, and this is an important one. Please hear me. If you do buy these speakers, the veneer on the front edge is very delicate. Okay. So if you go to take these grill covers off, do not allow your fingernails to press up against the veneer and leverage the grill off. Just take the grill off and hold onto the grill and only the grill. Do not touch the front of the veneer. <laughs> Don't ask me how I know that. Because they will, uh, you will mar that veneer very, very easily. It's, it's very, at least the pair I had, uh, it was very delicate. If you're watching this, you're probably wondering if I have heard the Cornwall 4 and what did I think of it and how does it compare to the Forte 3? A couple of the differences between the Cornwall 4 and the Forte 3. Every review I heard, I've heard or, or watched that compared the Cornwall 4 to the Forte 3 says, uh, it's just, you know, the Cornwall 4 is just like the Forte 3. It's just bigger. Everything's bigger. And I will agree with that for the most part, but there are a few slight differences that I would like to, to mention. Um, the first thing, the, the, the biggest difference, to me anyway, is the sound of the mid-range. The sound of the mid-range on the Forte 3 is going to have a little more bite to it. The Cornwall 4 is going to have a little bit more refinement to it. Also, the overall sound, the Cornwall 4 is going to feel, is going to sound more balanced overall, whereas the Forte 3 has that bit of mid range forwardness. Um, the Forte 3 may have a little bit more live there sound. The Cornwall 4, of course, it still has that live or there sound, but I think sometimes that, that mid-range bite on the Forte 3 may have a little bit more lively tone to it than the Cornwall 4. Also, obviously the Cornwall 4 is a little bit higher, so you don't have the same dispersion problems that you have with the Forte 3. And I, I always, I felt like the Cornwall 4, the very lowest base, felt like it had a little bit more output a little bit more gusto to it. As far as size, yes, Cornwall 4 definitely has a bigger sound to it. If I explain the Forte 3 to sound like music's coming from an open window with the Cornwall 4, I would say the music is coming through an open door or garage door. It just breathes. 
both great speakers. Um, I, I think you'd be happy with either one of them. The Cornwall 4 is huge, especially the width is definitely a factor. They look, uh, in my opinion, you put the grills on them and they look like just these giant storage boxes sitting in your room. Take the grills off them, they look a lot better, but they're still very big. Let's talk about the home theater use of the Forte 3. Obviously, this is a very dynamic, very efficient, horn-loaded speaker. It has some directivity to it. So you know it's going to be good for home theater, right? That's Home theater is mostly about dynamics, and the Forte 3 has plenty of dynamics. The Achilles heel of the Forte 3 and the entire Klipsch Heritage line for home theater is that there is no matching center channel choice. Okay, Klipsch, what's going on? You've got to come out with a center channel. Come out with two center channels to bridge the gap between them, or at least come out with one for the Forte 3 and the Cornwall 4. Um, you'll, if you go online and you ask people, they'll say, well, we'll get the RC64 3. And there's a couple problems with that. First of all, the veneer on the RC64 3 reference center channel is different. Even if you get the walnut color, it's actually walnut stained hickory. Um, it is not the same finish on the Forte 3 or the Cornwall 4. The other issue is that they're not really that great of a tonal match. And I know that most speakers are not a good tonal match with their horizontal center channels to begin with. But the reference uh, series, the RC64, actually has a more laid back sound I didn't really care for the RC64 III uses the center channel with the Fortes or the Cornwalls for that matter. Um, you could do Phantom Center if you're fine with that. If you're usually the one sitting right in front of the television, these things will do Phantom Center like a champ, so no problem there. Uh, you could try, of course, a Heresy 4, which I have not tried, but that has its own issues. It's, it could be down low or maybe you've got a coffee table or an ottoman or something like that. And the dispersion is going to be that great right in front of you. Uh, maybe a uh, reference premier speaker. I haven't tried one of them as a center channel. So, that, I mean, that might be a little bit less laid back than the RC64. Might work better. I don't know. So, to wrap this up, Klipsch Forte 3. Big sound. Great sound stage. Amazing clarity. Amazing separation and, and detail especially in the mid-range uh, has realistic bite again makes even studio recordings sound like a live event in front of you uh, but not a pa sound it's much more refined than a pa this is definitely a, a high fidelity speaker it's just not as the warm uh, laid back sound that you may be used to but if you're looking for something that just breathes music efforts, effortlessly with very low distortion, very clean sound, then you should definitely check out the Forte 3. And again, uh, another great thing about it is you can use it with really any amp of your choice. So the amp, no amp is going to sound bad. It's just going to sound different. You just need to find the sound uh, that you like to use with it. As I said again, if this is your first time visiting, thank you for stopping by. If this is not your first time, thanks for coming back again. I hope to have more videos out in the future. So please uh, hit subscribe and hit the bell down there so you'll be notified when new videos come out. And uh, thanks for stopping by and have a great day. I'll see you next time. Bye.